gentlemen to another how to series video. In this video I will be directing you on how to make your Mac into a personal home computer server. This is a relatively simple process that you may need to use when uh, either transferring a file from one computer to another or if you want to set up some sort of a home server to store everything you have from pictures to movies. Now this process is made very simple due to the fact that uh, Apple has designed the Mac OS X over Unix, which is a very broad and very universally used operating system for server-based servers. This Apple has made it a very simple process by adding this a something called Apache Server, which is Unix command gobbledygook for a server client you can set up very easily through preferences. Now. Every web server you have, every file con server that they have in the world, uses Apache. It's almost a universal. It's almost like power running through your computer. You can just assume it's there. So I'm going to show you today how to set up your computer for this process. Several reasons you might want to do this is one, maybe you have a file on your computer, like a, de a laptop, and you want to send it off to your desktop to go print it out or something. And you don't want to use a flash drive if you don't have one on hand. Now you can do this over the network using this process. Another thing you can do is you can set this up so that every computer in your house will look to this a computer. For example, my Mac Pro is set up this way. So any computer in the house can see this and look at it as, as a file drop box. So I can just drop all my crap into it. So it's a very useful system. Very good if you have a computer that has robust storage like a Mac Pro or if you just have some computer with a large drive and you want to store everything on there. So here we go. First thing you want to do is you want to open up System Preferences. From there you want to go into Sharing. Now here is your default thing. This is the name of my computer. Blah blah blah. DVD sharing off. And this will probably, if you have a fresh install of Mac OS X, this is what you're going to get. So uh, what we have here is what you want to click off is File Sharing. Okay. Now this is a very interesting little thing because this is how you set up your Dropbox for all the computers in the area. Once you enable this, everybody can find your computer at either this address here, AFP 10.0.1.13, or they can type in your computer name. And the I'll show you where to type that in in a second. But that's the this is your computer address that everybody that you want to hook up to this computer will look to. So uh, next thing we want to do is you want to have folders that are open to the public. Say you have kids in the house and you don't want them going into certain folders, going into certain folders in your computer, because this will open up your computer entirely unless you restrict it. Um, so what you do after this is you set up a shared folder. So right now I have a public folder here that is a Dropbox for my account. Now anybody that logs in can get into this. See, can get into it and read only. You can set your privileges here. Uh, users that can read and write are just me. Staff, that's a default that comes in. Everyone can read only. You can set this only to read and write so that they can, whoever accesses this server can read and write files, which means they can view the files in there and then edit them. Or what they're set to by default is read only, which is to see what the files are, look into them, but cannot edit. Another little uh, nifty thing is the Dropbox application, which is write only, which means you can drop stuff in there and not see into it, or no access at all, which is... Um, if you want to set up just for one sir, one's, uh, one client, that's a good way to do it. So you can do this in a business if you wanted to, too. This is a relatively simple process. So next, uh, if you say you're going to be given automatically the privileges to read and write. Now, let's say you want to add in a, uh, a client, for example. Um, it goes through your address book and stuff like that. A uh, new person. We're going to make a new person. The person's going to be client1. Now, this is going to be, um, actually, I'll just name it user1 that makes things a lot easier. And then um, this is basically your login into this file server. So I'm going to name the user user1. Uh, be nifty if you didn't have a space there. Password I'm going to set to user1, all lowercase, user1. And that's that's how you make an account. Now anybody who uses knows this account, has a username and password, can log into it and then you can restrict them what you restrict them via the permissions on what they can and cannot do in this file server. And anybody who has this account can access it anywhere. So it's not restricted to a certain computer. So if you hit create account, blah, 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 blah. Good. It says that there's a new client. Should be popping up here any minute now, right? Oh, you gotta you have to enable them here. So go back. When it goes to the next screen, hit select. And they should appear here. 
So they are user one. I, they have the permission automatically of read only. We're going to make this into a Dropbox so I can drop um, audio files from a computer downstairs into this into this computer. So that's now set up. So you have you have a file server sitting by, standing by for someone to use it. Now I'm going to show you how to access this file server from another computer. For that, I'll need to switch over to my other computer, so I'll be right back with you in a second. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I am now on my MacBook Air, which I'll be using to demonstrate this, how to hook up to the server from another Mac. So you can't hook up to this. This server will be specifically designed for your home and network only. You cannot access this from an off-site location that is not on your wireless network or plugged into your router. That's one of the downsides to this. The upside of this means that you cannot be hacked by outside sources unless they were somehow hooked up to your Wi-Fi, which is why you put a password on your Wi-Fi. Uh, this process will work for PCs, so if you have a PC computer, as long as you can hook up to a, a AFP that's it, uh, protocol, which is the um, Apache server protocol that allows computers to access the files, you can get on there. How you do that, I do not know. I do not have a Windows computer to try this out on. So we're going to continue from here. So to connect to the server, you go to go, connect to server, and this is where you type in that magical address. Let me go pop that up on the other computer for a second here. The address that was there with the uh, the AFP slash yada 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 stuff, that is the uh, address you want to use, which I will be showing you a picture of what it looks like. It says AFP uh, and then the number. So AFP, I will most likely be blotting this out because I do not want people knowing my AFP number in case there is some way to hack into this. So uh, type in that AFP number and then hit connect and then it'll give you this little thing connecting to server and then it'll ask you for your your address, your, your uh, passcode, your user that you put in there. As you can remember, I set it up as a Dropbox on user 1. You can also sign in with Apple. You have the overseeing Apple ID on the computer that you're in question accessing, which I do since both these computers are hooked up. So let's continue on with the registered user. So user 1 was the name of the user we were using. Lowercase user 1, user 1. And you can say remember this in Keychain so that whenever your computer boots up, it'll look for this drive and automatically log in for you so you can always have it. So it's a connect. And it'll ask me what volume do you want me to mount to. We're going to mount to the public folder, which is um, the public folder for any computer that's a Mac, is the folder that is, um, as you can see, I'm already hooked up to it. Uh, the public folder I'll show you right now. Now we're hooked up, so you see the Dropbox that's here. And I don't have permission to see it because I'm only for writing purposes only. So that's the Dropbox. I can drop any file I want in there. So let's just say I want to drop this in here. Yes. And it's dropped in there now. If I go on the other computer, it'll be sitting there. There you go. It takes a few seconds because this is over the, uh, the, the wireless internet. Uh, the public folder, if you're wondering if you're on the server side and you want to take the folders, you want to go into your computer, which I haven't used Mountain Lion a lot, so I'm a little, little off beaten by this. Ah, <laughs> important, important, important. Show your hard drives. <laughs> That's the important part. Okay. Uh, you go into here. So you go into your Macintosh HD. Uh, users. Find your user. Here's my user. And then the public folder. There it is. That's where your Dropbox is going to be. The public folder is this, and that's the default folder this server will set up when you um, are on the other side of the server setting up the user's permissions. It'll always go to the public folder. That's the folder that Unix is set up and is basically universally accepted as the folder where you, people can access and drop stuff in. That was a pretty clever design by designers who de developed Unix. So anyway, that's how you set up a basic file server on your Mac. This will work for Windows and Mac, but the server, I'm showing you how to do it on the Mac setup. Uh, connection, Windows, Mac, as I said before. This is really straightforward, really useful, because then you don't need to use flash drives or thumb drives to go between computers and be like, oh, let me transfer my file here. I'll unplug, plug it back in. Now, you can just stream files over the internet, and people have always asked me, is that possible? Yes, it is. And, and thankfully, for security purposes, it's only on your network. So if you have a secure wireless network, you are golden. So that's going to wrap it up for today. 
any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to ask. Uh, check out my other how-to series. I have a Mac Pro how to install an unsupported, on a unsupported Mac, Mountain Lion. So, for example, my 2006 Mac Pro will not is not supported and will not run Mountain Lion. And I have a way to run Mountain Lion on it without hacks or bootloader. So that chameleon bootloader gobbledygook, which could screw up your computer and destroy the in components inside of it, that I do not need for I have figured out a way around it. So check out that video. I also have, for those who have a Mac Pro from 2006 to 2009, I believe, a how to install a wireless card into it. So I have a wireless card in my Mac Pro now, thanks to that video. If you're interested in Mac Pro 2006s, I have an entire series on setup and unboxing and upgrades. Uh, if you want to check out Mac tutorials, uh, repair series I'm working on, I'm going to be uh, fixing a G4 Mac and Power Max power supply. I just need to get that video uploaded. So thank you. Please like and subscribe.